Creative Loafing asked us to uh, take four boxes and redo them and recycle them into themes of the environment. What we decided to do is uh, we actually chose the four elements and then gave each artist that theme to redo their box. How did you approach the idea of an earth box? Because that was your theme for this box. Well, first Philip and Chad suggested that we each do an element, and I'm drawn to earth, and um, mainly I wanted to not pollute the earth, because as I said, art can be pollutive, and um, so I was like, should I put the pollution in the air, or in the water, or on the ground, how do you do that, you know, how do you compromise or make it minimally pollutive, so I wanted to honor the earth, but also represent the earth, and there's a lot of metal in the earth, you know, metal comes out of the earth, and so I grinded it, ground it, grinded it, <laughs> also ground me into the piece. How'd you do the collaboration? How did that work? Uh, yeah, we thought it would be a really cool idea with the water, since Scott is a tattoo artist. Um, common theme in tattooing, and he's a kind of specializes in Japanese-style tattooing, so uh, we thought the water would be really great with the waves, and um, tentacles just gave a really good um, kind of basis for putting a lot of things in there, uh, in the tentacles, and we thought it would be a cool Philip and Chad did the firebox for Creative Loafing and asked them a little bit about it. How did you approach the collaboration? Well, we, uh, we really just wanted to uh, work together and show some imagery about the environment and uh, really more specifically about what America is doing to the environment. Yeah, I noticed a lot of the environment was on fire or yeah. consumed in a yeah. mushroom cloud. Yeah, there was a lot of juxtaposition of the, uh, the Statue of Liberty with nuclear explosions, nuclear explosions. and yeah, and burning forests and yeah, it's very American. I didn't know how to convey air easily. You gotta a, show motion, I think. In a painting, so I decided I would draw a, uh, or paint a robot flying a kite. Right. I like it. I noticed on the front, the bottom, the robot's face almost looks like a cassette player. Was that intentional or is that just me liking cassettes? Uh, it was, it was uh, an accident, but I just looked at it too and I said, oh, it looks like a cassette. So it worked. And he was. I was look. I was checking out his box, and I was like, I was looking at it, and I wanted to see what's inside the box. And he said, "There's robots inside the box." What made you want to put robots inside the box? Um, I had this sponge stencil thingy where I could do a bunch of robots real fast. So I decided that was going to save me from uh, being later on it than I than it, it was because I finished it this morning. When did you first get into robots? Uh, when I first started painting, probably about seven years ago. Are you a robot? Uh, yeah. Yes, I, I have a robot on my, my arm. Oh, see, that's, that's very similar, except it's, what, what is that, the receiver? That's crooked. It's an, his antenna is, uh, is crooked, yeah. Did you draw that one also? Yes, yes, that was my first tattoo. <laughs> I like it. Have you ever had a sexual fantasy about a robot? Probably, probably. Like a boxy one, or like a female-looking one, or straight, straight metal robot? A straight metal robot. I, I have to agree with you on that one.